Let us not forget everything that happens. It's by the will of Allah. Holy it's time to unite and stand, and we will be the best amongst men. It's not time to be extreme or duty unthinkable, but to stand together as one. Turn into sooner followers, streaming. Every day, various platforms, trust me, you'll find a way, soon the followers. Assalamu alaikum, you class alert. Join us every Saturday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Central for the Articles of Belief by Muhammad S. Adli, right here on Soon the Followers. But anyway, like I was saying, guys, I got the phone call from one of the sisters. Her husband uh, declared divorce on her and he threatened to take the children from her. And so she asked me, she said, Sister Layla, is it true that I have to give my babies to him? She said, because the imam of her mosque told her that she has to give the baby to him because he's responsible. I said, no. This is another example as to how we have to learn the Sunnah. We have to learn the Hadiths. Allah does talk about how it's the man's job to provide and maintain. But remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will never, ever, ever understand the meaning of the Quran until you learn the hadiths the hadiths look at that fat cat the hadiths are the explanation of the quran so let me explain what that's talking about the same event happened like i tell you guys there is no question and i prove it prove it to me i mean ask me i can prove it there is no situ situation, there is no scenario that you guys can come up with in this world that today that the prophet ain't already experienced in his lifetime. The same thing happened in his lifetime more than once. But I'm going to give you the best example. Umar, ready Allahu anha. And y'all know who Umar is. He'll be the second person to enter paradise after the Prophet Muhammad. So Lali, he wants them. He is the second best of this nation after the Prophet Muhammad. So Lali, he wants them. Umar divorced one of his wives. Oh yeah, it happens all the time. And Umar traveled to Cuba. Cuba is one of the suburbs of Medina. He went to Cuba and he saw his son playing outside and he went to grab him. He said, that's my son. I'm going to go get him. I'm taking him back to Medina with me. Umar got off his camel, went to grab the boy. His mother, the ex-wife, ran out the house. She said, no, he's mine. You're not taking my son. And they were in this tug of war. So the prophet came out of the Kuba mosque because he was with Umar. He came out the mosque and he said, what's going on, Umar? And, uh, the pro and Umar said, oh, prophet of Allah, this is my son. This is my son. And it's my job to take, he's mine and he comes from me and I'm taking care of him. I'm taking him back to me. And the woman was crying. She said, oh, prophet of Allah, my baby, my baby. The little boy was around seven years old. So she said, oh, prophet of Allah, my baby, can he just take my baby? The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was quiet for a second. And they notice when he goes quiet, that's when Allah sends a revelation to him. The angel Jabril had come to him and was telling him. Then after a few minutes went by, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one 
who is most deserving of the child is the mother. The mother at the age that this child is, six, seven, eight, these formulative years, the child belongs to the mother. She's the one most deserving. He said, Umar, let the child go. And he stays with his mother. When he reaches the age of puberty, then you are deserving of him, Umar. He said, but in these formulative years, because a little boy was seven, before the age of puberty, the prophet said the one deserving of the children is the mother. So the woman grabbed her baby and she ran in the house with him and slammed the door because she didn't want Umar. But Umar accepted what the prophet said. He said, he, the, the prophet said, Umar, when he's a puberty, you can, you have your rights to him. So that Hadith is Sahih Bukhari. That hadith is also in Sahih Muslim, and it's even more detailed in, in Muwatta. So again, guys, you have to learn these hadiths, but most of you are too old to learn them because you have to start at the age of six or seven, like I did, okay? But what you need to do when you're in a situation like that, the prophet said, ask the people of knowledge. So that's what the sister did. She called me. So who's deserving of her babies? I told her, your husband cannot take them kids. They're six or seven years old. You're responsible for them. They belong to you right now. They're, but they are under your care unless you marry. Now, if you get married, it's going to be a different answer. But unless, this, unless you marry, it becomes a different answer. Okay? Depending on situations. And that's a different class. But I want you sisters to understand that why does Allah keep the child with you? Any children you have who are not yet puberty, why are they deserving to be with you? Because you're the one that is supposed to teach them this religion. You're the one that's supposed to teach them manners. You're the one that's, that's supposed to uh, be the, uh, teach them in their formulative years. And then you hand them over to their father when the problems begin. And when do the problems, see the hikmah of the law? Children are easy to deal with before puberty because the fitra is in their hearts and it's awake. Once puberty sets in, that's when the girls want to date. When puberty sets in, that's when the boys want to sell drugs. Want some? Want to earn that dough, that fast money? They now become the problem of your husband. That's his job to deal with that. But you trained them, you raised them, you gave them the light of Islam. That's how it's supposed to be. Remember the story I did: the heroine of Islam, Um Mani. Who was Um Mani? She was the mother of Muad. And who was Mu'ad? He was one of the first ambassadors of Islam. He was sent to the people of Yemen to teach them the religion. And also Mu'ad is the one that the prophet said, no one, I repeat, no one, I repeat, no one understands the lawful and the unlawful better than he does. Umani. She raised her son. When she converted to Islam in Medina, so did he with her as a child. She told him, go, this is the messenger of Allah. She said, I want you to follow him. I want you to accompany him. I want you to learn from him. And she taught him manners. That's how you sisters are supposed to be. But unfortunately, we're too caught up in our personal drama. Oh, my husband got another wife. Oh, my husband don't love me. Oh, my husband don't. We so caught up in our husbands that we neglect our children. We neglect nurturing them, raising them, giving them the foundations of Islam they need to become strong believers. 
or we're so caught up in this dunya with working. I want to be rich. That's what it's all about, the dollar bill. I want the big car. I want the beautiful mansion. I want the swimming pool, movie stars, Texas tea. We into that crap. And we forget about our children. We leave them at home with television, with YouTube hip hop and all of that. But I want you women to understand you will be held accountable. Every female on this planet, including myself, we will be asked in your grave. You ain't got to wait to the day of judgment. Like I told y'all, it all begins in that grave. Those angels, after they, they not going to just ask you four questions. That's just the beginning. They're going to interrogate you about your entire existence and the choices you made. Those angels are gonna ask you sisters, why didn't you teach your children how to pray? Why didn't you teach your children good manners? Why did you put your children secondary over the life of this world? Secondary to, to your husband and that female drama. That's one of the obligations that our law has imposed upon us women. He said, everyone is a guardian and responsible for something. You women are guardians and responsible for your children and your husband's property. How did you care for them? You're going to be interrogated about that in that grade. And guess what? Knocker gonna be standing there with that iron crowbar. Oh yeah, it ain't just a cheering. And when you say, uh, I don't know, he gonna take that crowbar and bust you in your head. He gonna tell you, you failed your children. You failed your obligations that Allah imposed upon you. You put this dunya over them and your son grew up to be a drug addict. He didn't grow up to be like Muad. Your daughter became a stripper. She had 10 children out of wedlock because you didn't teach her the deen. You allowed her to associate with non-Muslims and adapt their lifestyle. And that he gonna take that crowbar and bash your head in over and over and over again. You women better get it together. Hello? The children are your responsibility before puberty. Remember, before puberty, they belong to, to you. And that comes with a price. The price is teaching them this dean, keeping their fitra, the fitra of the heart awakened. We never forget while I were better. We'll get back to those classes after Ramadan. Hello, Kareem Abuze. We'll be back to those classes after Ramadan. But for now, it's your job as a woman to, to keep the fitra in the, your child's heart nourished. So that's who deserves to have the, the kids, you. And it comes with a price. Are you paying it? All right, so I hope that answers that question. <laughs> and I have to make it as a diet. It's my job to shake your heart. A lot of you women don't take your, your, your responsibility serious. I see you. Okay, a lot of these cheering, cheering, they being raised by the Kaffirs. You got him in calf for school. That's a big no, no, number one. You're going to answer to a law for that too, sisters. Oh, yeah. A law is going to ask you, why didn't you homeschool your cheering? Oh, well, I'm not educated myself. Wait, SafaUSA.org. Sister Layla carries SafaUSA.org is all over my website. On every video I put out, every stream I do, I tell you, uh, con, uh, uh, go to SafaUSA.org and put, check out this homeschooling, Islamic homeschooling for your children. Ki from kindergarten 
to 12th grade and it's not expensive. Maybe, maybe the brother make a deal with you. You never know. Allah is going to hold you women accountable for what you do and what you're not doing for your cheering. Think about that. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's the answer to that question. And I really hate to hear about all these sisters. I got about 10 sisters going through divorce right now. Ramadan, month of Ramadan, 10 sisters going through divorces. Oh, may Allah make it easy for the Muslims. May we, may Allah uh, uh, bless us with righteous husbands and righteous wives. And may we be able to work out our problems, you know, uh, Islamically and equitably without ending up in divorce. But if you got to do it, it's good and clean. If you got a man beating you in the head, you got a man that's not doing his obligations to you, oh yeah, it's good and clean, get rid of him. But if you got a good husband, you sisters got to work on being good wives because righteous men are for righteous women. And a righteous man, if he realize that you are not righteous, he going to toss you to the curb. He going to kick you to the curb. Because let me tell you something, you never know what you get until you live with it. That's why ain't no dating in this line. You can date a person for centuries and still won't know them until you live with them. So sometimes we don't know what we're getting. And when we realize that, that when a man realizes that if he's a good man, a righteous man, he realizes that you are weak in your faith, you are weak as a female, you're not a good mother, you got your priorities screwed up in life, he, gonna, he ain't going to be with you. He's going to get rid of you and replace you with something better. So you sisters better put your priority, make your priority a law first and foremost and learning this religion correctly. That should be your priority. Learning this dean correctly because it's your responsibility to instill it into your children. That falls on you, not the father, you. All right, okay. So today for this class, and I want y'all to order this book, Articles of Belief, today we're going to be continuing our discussion on what it means to believe in the prophets of Allah. It, as Muslims, if we obeyed the messengers of Allah, if we obeyed the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like those companions did, when the prophet told Umar that his, that, that his ex-wife was more deserving of the child, Umar left. When the child was puberty, he got him, okay? The companion said, oh, oh Allah, I hear and I obey. If we would be like them, just uh, obey Allah and obey his messengers, we wouldn't end up in all these divorces with all these problems and our children apostating, pregnancizing each other and all that crazy dope dealing and all of that. And that's the problems we face with here in America. Unwed pregnancies, drugs, alcohol, and by the way, suicide. Oh yeah, they put another study out. They said the two religious groups with the highest attempts of suicide of children, number one, the Amish, Number two, the Muslims. We wouldn't have these problems if we followed the, what the prophet said. So I want everybody to take out their books because I did post up on YouTube and Facebook the pages. I hope y'all went over the two pages that we're going to be discussing tonight. And uh, it speaks about what I'm talking about, how what happens when we fail to obey and follow what the prophets of Allah came with. We end up with all these issues. Let me uh, put this up for here and let me share my screen, my PowerPoint to the, what is Canva doing open? Okay, let me share my PowerPoint to Zoom first and now to belief in Allah. Okay, that's it. This is you guys here. Okay, this is the 
people on YouTube. And make sure you got me on the big screen TV for the cheering. Yeah, the cheering need to keep watching. Okay. Let's see. Inshallah, you guys should see this page. Let me know if it's a problem at all, Mina. Because I can't, I don't have it on my phone. It's usual. Okay, so tonight in your books, that's why I was confused. It's we are tonight we'll be discussing pages 46 through 49. I mean 48. And by the way, guys, um, I'm gonna change this class to 10 o'clock for Ramadan because a lot of some of the sisters told me it's better for them. I forgot we got three different times going on here, time zones in my Zoom room. And uh, we all are breaking fast at different times. So I'm going to change it to 10 uh, for Wednesday. And by the way, I put this, a lot of you asked me to put the scan me for the, to join the Zoom room because that way it's easy. A lot of the sisters want to come into the Zoom room so you can ask me your questions on the, the microphone. Well, that's it. I, from what I'm going to do from now on, when I put out things, I'm going to put out the, the Zoom, the QR code to join the Zoom. And I also put a thing out yesterday with the QR code for the schedule. The, the, you can find the daily schedule on our Sooner Followers website. And also it's in our Facebook group. So I, for those of you on Facebook, I made a, a thing uh, with our classes and I put a scan for uh, the schedule, the, the daily schedule. Okay, but that's the the the, the QR code for those of you who want to join uh, the Zoom room for your questions. And this is a picture of the book. This book is written by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atley, the old man. Okay, the Articles of Belief, and you can per get this book at www.atleyonline.com. Please get it. That's how it looks. And let's go over the pages for today. What a lot of people fail to understand as Muslims is that everything that happens is in the hands of Allah. Everything that happens and doesn't happen lies in the hands of Allah. What do I mean by that? Believe it or not, guys, there are some deviant groups of Muslims who pray. Can y'all believe this? They pray to the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They believe that the Prophet Muhammad is still alive, and they believe that he can answer their supplications, that he can come and talk to them in their sleep, and he can give them advice in life. And of course, these are Mutazali. They belong to uh, the, one of the different Sufis groups. They believe this. They believe the Prophet Muhammad can change their life. They believe that he's not even human, that he's made out of light. Okay? This is not true. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has no power to do anything. He has no power to make you a Muslim because he has no control over your heart. Allah controls the heart. If Allah wants to lead you to Islam, he will do so. If Allah doesn't, then you won't be led. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a human being just like you, just like me. And if you learn about him, you would know that he couldn't even save his own uncle. No one can stop the punishment of Allah if Allah wishes it upon you, not even the prophet Muhammad. So for those deviant groups that are calling upon right now, they're calling upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to help them. I had one sister uh, contact me uh, in one of those groups. And she said, Sister Layla, the imam was making dua at the mosque. And he was asking, the, he called upon the prophet Muhammad to help the people of Gaza. Can he do that? And I had never heard it, but I know there are Sufis that do that, but I've never experienced that or heard that. But I told her, no, the prophet Muhammad, we don't call upon him. We call upon Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam couldn't even guarantee victory to his own self. 
We have to understand that all prophets are human beings. And our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was no different. He is not Allah. He is not the son of Allah. He is not an extension of Allah. Nor does he have any qualities of lordship. He was a human. He had, uh, uh, he looked like a human. He had feelings like a human. He became sick. He became tired. He went through hunger. He had anxiety. He went through fear. He was a human being. And all prophets Allah sent were the same. Listen to what prophet Abraham said. He said, and it is Allah who feeds me and gives me drink. And when I am sick, it is Allah who cures me. And who will cause me to die and then bring me back to life? That is Allah. So none of the prophets of Allah claim to be anything but that. Jesus, he never called himself the son of Allah. And Abraham, he was a, a prophet, the prophet that Allah took as a personal friend. But Abraham ate, he drank. Allah is the one, he, he acknowledged the fact that Allah is the provider, the sustainer. He acknowledged the fact that it is Allah who can cure, who can heal, who gives life and death, not him. So when we start to uh, attribute divine qualities to prophets or sheikhs or imams or saints, this is when we transgress the limits of Allah. This is when actually we leave the folds of Islam and we become non-believers. This is shirk. This is disbelief. When people start raising others beyond the position that Allah has chosen them, this is shirk. And this is why celebrating birthdays is haram. Because celebrating birthdays is shirk. You're raising yourself or your child to a level higher than what he is. You're saying that because your child was born, or because you were born, the people are supposed to bring you presents, give you cakes, make you gifts. This is celebrating you. This is putting you on a level higher than what Allah created you as. When people start to believe in this type of stuff, you know, this is when we lose that closeness with Allah. Our prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, I am a human being like you and I am capable of forgetting. So when I forget something, remind me. And let me give you the story behind this hadith. One day the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, led the people in the door prayer. And instead of praying a uh, uh, four rakats, he prayed two. And when they were done, Someone said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, did you forget or has the prayer been shortened? The Prophet said, The prayer has not been shortened, and I did not forget. And then the Prophet looked around and said, Is what this man saying true? Did I really forget? They said, Yes, you only prayed two rakats. So the Prophet went back and made two more, and then he did two prostrations of for forgetfulness. And after that, he said, I am a human being just like you. And I forget just like you. So when I forget, remind me. So that hadith you can find in Bukhari and Muslim. And it's the Dalil. You know, that our prophet is, was not a, a god. He was, a he was not a law. He was a prophet. A messenger sent to us. And a law never forgets. Allah differentiates himself from any of us. He says, your Lord is never forgetful. And this verse of the Quran here, I want you brothers to pay attention to. Because we're living in the days of fitting when a lot of you Muslim brothers are making things haram for women. Telling women that they can't wear colors, that they can't wear nice clothing, that they can't be beautiful, that they can't wear makeup. Allah didn't say none of that crap. 
and neither did the prophet Muhammad. His wives were beautiful. They wore makeup, they wore colors, they wore nice clothing. So what, who are you? And then you're gonna tell me, well, it's different today. Allah is never forgetful. The laws that Allah made are for all times. They never get old. You saying that Allah forgot to say that a woman should cover her face? You, Allah forgot to say that women should be ugly, that Allah made a mistake making us look the way we look? He doesn't make mistakes, man does. And our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made mistakes too, but we have to be careful. The mistakes that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made were mistakes not in teaching us or presenting us the religion, but the regular mistakes that any human would make, like forgetting how many rakats. He didn't say that the prayer changed, that it's only two rakats. He said, I forgot. He didn't make any mistakes in teaching or conveying the message of Islam. Everything he told us regarding the religion is accurate and correct. <laughs> but we have to accept that he was a human and sometimes he could make a mistake or forget. We got some Muslims today that think that their imams are free from making a mistake. You got some Muslims that believe that their sheikh doesn't make no mistakes. <clears throat> we got some Muslims that say, oh, because my sheikh is a sheikh, he doesn't even have to pray anymore. Who said that? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed until he died. Subhana Allah. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. May Allah forgive you, O Muhammad. Why did you grant them leave? for remaining behind. You should have persisted in regards to your order for them to continue on jihad. This is another example of a mistake that our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made, which proves he was a human being. Again, it's not a mistake in, in teaching the religion, but it's a human mistake and not uh, persisting that some hypocrites fight with us. There were four men who refused to go out and fight against the Romans. One of them said, oh, prophet of Allah, I've never seen a white woman before. And I'm afraid that if I see a white woman, I might fall into sin and fornicate. So that's why I'm not participating. Well, that's when Allah sent this verse down. Why did you tell him he didn't have to come? You should have made him come. Supana Allah, okay? Listen to what our prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another authentic hadith. He said, all the children of Adam are sinners. All human beings are liable to make mistakes and commit sins. Allah is the only one who has the final word. No one is perfect. We should never exaggerate about a prophet or exaggerate about a leader because all humans are hu all humans are human and make mistakes. He said, "Do not overpraise me like the Christians did Jesus." They said that Jesus is the son of God when he isn't. So here we can see the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling the Muslims, telling us to not make the same mistake that with him that the, Jew, the Jews and Christians did. The Christians made Jesus to be the son of Allah. They over-exaggerated him. They celebrated his birth. They put him on a level with the law. Another uh, dialil that you sisters shouldn't be celebrating no birthdays. So don't follow the same course of action as the Christians did, okay? Just because a person has knowledge of Islam doesn't make them perfect. Scholars have desires and scholars make mistakes. 
Scholars are the servants of a law too. Listen to what a law says in the interpretation of the meaning. Verily, he was a grateful servant. Blessed be he who sent down the criterion of right and wrong to his servant Muhammad so that he may be a warner to all mankind and jinn. See, Allah is saying that even the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant of his. And there is nothing wrong with being the servant of Allah. As a matter of fact, it's the highest position we any of us can reach as a human being. However, it is a terrible thing to be a servant of something else. So don't be a servant of a prophet, of a community, of yourself, of an imam or a scholar. Instead, just be a servant of Allah. And that's why we know I tell you sisters all the time, whenever you do any good deeds, you do them to please Allah, not your husband. You are not a servant of your husband. These brothers take that hadith totally out of context. You obey your husband in the things that Allah commanded you to obey them in. What are those things? Those things are to guard in his absence what he would have you to guard, meaning his children, his home, his property. When he calls you to bed, you respond. That you don't allow anyone into his house without his knowledge or permission. That you don't leave the house without his knowledge and permission. Those are the things you obey your husband in because Allah commanded you to. But if your husband tries to make you his servant by telling you, for example, to cover your face, to please him, you say, no way, Jose. Number one, it's not anything that my Lord commanded me to do. Number two, Allah is clear. He says he does not accept any good deed unless it's done only for him. If I were to cover my face to please you, I would get no reward for it. In fact, I'd be committing shirk. I will obey you in what Allah commanded me to obey you in. And I will please you and what Allah commanded me to please you in, but I will never be the slave of you. That's what you women tell your husbands, okay? We're slaves of Allah, not of anyone else, okay? And by the way, guys, uh, the people of Noah, Remember we talked about the other day how Noah alayhi salam was the first prophet that was sent as a messenger. Before Noah, the, all the prophets were just prophets. Okay? Why did Allah send Noah as a messenger? Because these were, this is when the people deviated away from Tawheed. Instead of being, being slaves of Allah, they became slaves of the dollar bill, slaves of sex, slaves of whatever else but Allah. So Allah sent Noah, you know, to call the people back to being slaves of Allah and not their desires. But the people didn't listen to him. And to not listen to a prophet is like not listening to any of them. We're supposed to obey the prophets of Allah. His people didn't. So he ended up making dua and Allah ended up destroying them and replacing them with better. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning. And indeed we have sent messengers before you, O Muhammad, some of them we have told you their story, like Noah, and some others we have not told you about. 
Allah has sent over 24,000 prophets, guys. The ones that he's told us of by name, they were the best of all the prophets. But there were others that we don't know their stories of. But the bottom line, for every prophet that was sent to a people, they were to be obeyed. And to not obey them and to deny one of them is to deny all of them. And I'm going to stop right here for today, okay? The next time we meet for this class, which will be Wednesday, we're going to speak more about what are the consequences. What are the consequences of denying and not listening or not obeying the prophets of Allah? We got Muslims today who call themselves Muslims, but are they living their life as true believers? Are they obeying the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or are they obeying their sheikhs, their imams? I told you life is a circle. We're back to the four imams now. As a daya, this Ramadan, I see that. I'm seeing that we, we're back to what, what did the four imams say? What did the four imams say? And not everything the four imams says is in sync with what the prophet said. If the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, then who cares what the four imams said? Who cares what they thought? Who cares what they believed? I'm seeing a lot of that now. We're back. Like I said, life is just a circle. It goes around and around and around. History just repeats itself. We done got past worshiping my sheikh, and now we're back to the four imams. And if the four imams didn't say it, we don't accept it, even if it's a hadith. I give you the hadith about the menses, and it's authentic. It's from Bukhari. It's from the prophet himself. And I give you Aisha's um, hadith on it too. And Ibn Abbas, you're going to reject it because the four imams didn't mention it? We're going to talk about that the next time we meet in this class.